Hey everybody, welcome to my suburban oasis. Well, it is a brand new day out in the garden and the ranch life fence folks have just pulled up and they are getting ready to start their second day of work. My name is Soleil and I garden in a zone 5B in Mid Michigan and we are installing a new fence from Ranch Life Plastics today and it is a vinyl fence and it's gonna be replacing our old wooden fence. Yesterday we saw uh, the fence panels that we previously had that were wooden and decayed really being taken down and um, all of the concrete blocks that the fence posts were in were being pulled up and the garden is still wide open but I've come out and inspected and I haven't seen any deer damage at this point so I'm really pleased with that because I did see an eight point buck in our neighborhood um, just yesterday so it's good to know that they haven't come in and eaten everything overnight. I think we're going to see a lot of new construction going in today so I'm excited to take you along on this journey further with me and can't wait to see the finished product. Let's go! It's been just a couple hours and you can see we've got lots of concrete bags here and fence is going up. Now they haven't put the caps on the posts yet but you can see that the garden is going to look a whole lot different with this new beautiful fence in and it's got kind of a double layer on it so you see it goes up about four feet and then after the four feet there's another uh, horizontal line and then the top and then each of these posts will be capped off at the top so they're just making their way down the line over here digging the holes adding the posts and then ensuring that um, they can get the fence in and over here on this side you can see they are just starting to dig for the posts along this edge I'm really excited for this gate also. I think everything's gonna look so much nicer from the street, from the front view as well. And they did have to work a bit with some electrical conduit that we have um, that's kind of was along the fence line here because that helps to provide power to our pool pump in the shed. But they are being amazing at working with everything that's here. They said it's a much tighter space than they're normally used to because of the fact that I have so much um, landscaping going in, but they are doing such a great job of, you know, really working with it and doing their best not to damage things. So one of the other things that they just told me is that you can see how the fence looks a little bit uneven along the top right now and kind of like a wonky caterpillar or worm up and down. They're going to be leveling that kind of out so that it will look really nice. It's really coming along here. Looks so fresh and clean. Got a lot of posts yet to go. And it'll probably be tomorrow when they actually finish. These guys are getting their squats in for sure today. Every day is leg day. <laughs> Every single day. And arm day. It's like a full workout. You don't need a gym membership with this job. Absolutely not. So I'm taking you back here just to show you as well. Um, they, as they dig holes in the ground to put the posts in, they have a lot of excess dirt. So I asked them to just bring it back here on the path. And so they're just kind of dumping piles of dirt along here, which just helps um, with retaining this slope as well. So we have a few piles and we'll get it spread out. 
It's interesting they actually had mentioned that the top foot of soil is um, really quite nice um, but then after that it gets hard so they can tell that there's been soil improvement over time and you can really see the difference in the different colors of the soil and where the clay starts and ends. And this uh, line right here is keeping them straight so that the fence doesn't end up wonky. Um, you can definitely tell that there's differences in elevation between where soil has piled up against the fence on the neighbor's side and on our side. So they have their challenges today in working through this, but they're doing a beautiful job. Highly recommend them. You guys, this is so exciting. It's so fun to watch this going up. Um, I've had somebody ask me, you know, why I didn't do the entire back, like why I didn't push the fence line back. It's so expensive. It's really expensive. Fencing costs a lot. So wouldn't be able to afford that, but also um, the deer. So if we put the fence all the way to the way back garden, what would happen is they would leap the fence. So deer can easily jump a six foot fence. But right now the way that my garden is set up, it is right on a hill. So the drop off or the steep slope seems to keep them from jumping over the fence into the back garden and eating things. So that is a very big key to my success in being able to grow many things that I otherwise wouldn't be able to do because they would eat them all. So this line is almost done in terms of getting the initial fencing panels in. And it looks amazing. Looks like this is the last panel before they get towards the gate here. And I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the climbing rows yet. I had wire on the other fence, so I will have to just figure that out because I might have to tie it onto the fence or use zip ties or something like that. I'm not sure, but um, yeah, I'm sure there'll be lots of things that I have to kind of tweak or figure out after the fence is finished, but it's looking really beautiful right now. Inside this box are the caps. You remember I um, really needed to take a look at what I wanted for the fencing and trying to decide which cap we were going to go with. I think these are going to be gorgeous. So they're really nice and flat and linear. And those will be put on top of each fence post. They have a beautiful pattern on top. And I think it's a really gorgeous design. Starting to see the changes on this side of the garden now and uh, you can see how much they have to dig out in each of these areas to try to get the posts down in. A lot of clay soil, a lot of hard digging. They're doing a great job though. This is hard. <laughs> it is, it's heavy and mucky. It's looking great. More progress is being made on this side over here at this point. Got a couple of fence panels going up. Definitely having to make a couple adjustments to the plan as we go, just to make sure that uh, the fence panels are able to be leveled out and they can make the corners well. One of the things that I've noticed about this fence is that it looks a little bit taller than the other fence, primarily because the other fence had like some swoops cut into it. So having that nice linear edge at the top um, provides even uh, a bit more privacy within our garden, which is nice. So we've got a couple panels up now here. And we'll check back in in a little bit.
Good morning. Pretty good. How are you guys doing this morning? Good. Day three of the project. How are you feeling? Are you sore? <laughs> a little bit. It's a little colder than yesterday, too. Yeah. Sure. A little chilly. Hopefully it warms up soon. The, the neighbors love the fence also, so they have said how beautiful and how amazing it improves their view as well. So in day three here, we're going to be finishing up the, the project, hopefully. That's the plan anyways. We got a hard frost last night, so everything is kind of droopy right now, but it's um, still looking beautiful because of the fence. And I did also have questions from folks about whether we plan to paint our deck to match the fence. And um, that is something I am considering. Um, it's not something that it's going to happen this year, obviously, with the temperatures, but we definitely have got to repaint our deck, and so I uh, might just find a match color and utilize that. That could be lovely as well. I mean, I like the color of the deck right now, but it could blend a little bit better and maybe even at some point tie in the door that goes into our garage over there with the colors. So just kind of blending things together a little bit more here and there. Once they're done with the fencing, I'm gonna to need to come through and kind of prop the trellises back up against the fences. And they still do need to come through and there's these t vinyl ties that are on the fences right now, right here um, on every single one of them and then put on the caps also. But we are getting there. I wanna show you down here yesterday, they really did some good cleanup. I've been impressed by the amount of care that they've taken both with my plants and then making sure that things look good when they leave. So you can see they had that giant pile of dirt over here and it just looks nice and clean and all tidy. So I'm really, really happy with that. So we'll be checking on them throughout the day to give some progress updates and can't wait to show you the final project and how it turns out. As so they put in these panels, they're putting them down into concrete, but uh, they're not actually really setting the concrete with water. They actually just dry set it. So, um, and then these fence panels pop into each of the posts. And we have some uh, panel going up behind the arborvita over here as well. One of the things that uh, the neighbor pointed out to me is now that we have the fence removed from the back of the shed is that when uh, the painters painted the fence last time there was some overspray. So we'll have to come through and power wash um, the back of the shed as well to really tidy that up. But both of the neighbors that we have on both sides of our house have been really great about this project. Um, they have been really helpful to us in terms of you know, just being agreeable and not having to worry about when it was going to be installed and that kind of thing. Both of them have dogs. And um, so, yeah, it's it's been a really great process and it's good to make sure you talk with your neighbors before you start a project to make sure there aren't any things um, on their side of the property that might get damaged or need to be moved before the project starts. Unfortunately for this crew, they um, told me that the yellow machine that they have is actually a really good power digger, but because of how tight the space is between the garden and the fence line, they are not actually able to use that. So they've been having to hand dig all of the post holes with a regular post hole digger. So that's part of the reason too why this is such a laborious project. Again, they have just been really amazing at being careful with the landscaping and it's really coming together.
over here is where we are um, going to have a gate. So they did a really great job of lining it up with the path over here, which is what I wanted so that we had, you know, really easy access point to pull the cart down if I need to. Obviously there's still plants that are here right now, but um, you know, those will be, those will be moved eventually. And um, it'll just be a walkway through so I'm really excited to have the extra gate and the extra access. Of course, the hill is rather steep back here, um, but just being able to get through and to the other side on both ends of this pathway is going to make a really big difference in our ability to get to the back and do maintenance because this is an area where I'm often, as you can see by this pile here, that I'm often, you know, throwing <clears throat> debris from the garden over the side of the fence to haul back there because it's a shorter <laughs> distance and it's just a uh, easy space to do that so this will be fantastic it is really starting to come together you guys and uh, I thought that it looked really nice before but then they come through and um, part of the dry setting and concrete allows them to actually make adjustments after that to the height of the fence so you can see that now they've come through and they've leveled it out and it looks so nice they still have to put the caps on these but you can see they've started taking off the black straps on the fencing <clears throat> and over here where it was kind of looking a little wonky and weird because of all the lines being a little bit off they've started to straighten this out as well isn't that amazing I'm loving this. It's looking so good. They're almost done. And I am losing a little bit of um, walking space on the other side of the fence because uh, they're having to move it back a little bit. So it puts this honeysuckle bush on the inside of the fence, which was previously on the out. Oh, well, it was kind of grown into the fence. <laughs> so, and then um, I'm gaining probably about a foot, six to 12 inches, maybe even a little bit more on the back side of this garden bed, which is actually kind of nice. It provides a little bit more space for me. So just we'll have to, you know, work on the path on the other side of the fence and see what I can do to make it a little bit more level back there. <clears throat> Going to definitely have to do some backfilling around the bottom of the, the fences to kind of slope the ground towards it. Um, but really happy with how this is coming along. You can see we have some space back behind this hydrangea now. And visually, the weight of this fence is much heavier than the chain link fences, but it's much cleaner lines. And it's a beautiful fence. So you can see down here, they're working on the gate right now. And that's going to be the other entryway into the way back. Just have a couple more panels to go along with the gates and the caps. But it is looking amazing. Amazing. These guys have been troopers working so hard.
are at the end of day three and the work is done. So I'm super excited. Are you guys ready for the grand reveal? I know we didn't have a garden tour this weekend, so this will just be a fence tour this, this week and uh, hopefully you all enjoy it. So let's take a look at what it looks like now that it's finally finished. Here we go. We are starting on the side of the house with the finished gate. As you can see, you can kind of get a peek into the garden and get a sense of what might be behind there, but it really still provides quite a bit of privacy. And it's got a really nice, easy latch to just lift up and pull open. And is a double gate, which I really wanted to make sure we have plenty of room to get in. And then it has a bar, which is drops down into the ground and that allows it just to stay into place um, so that if you want to open one side you can open one side or you can open both sides and this is a six foot wide gate and it should allow for a lot of different things to be able to come through as necessary and then when you lift this latch up if you want to you can hang it across this right here so it just lifts up and you can hang it there and that way it doesn't fall back down to the ground. So a wonderful gate to have. And then this is a look at the long border now. You can see they've gotten the caps on the top of the fence posts and I think they look gorgeous. They have come through and cleaned up all of their work gear and the hydrangeas are all turned brown but we have this beautiful fence behind them and we have the beautiful burgundy foliage and the foliage of the nine bark and the viburnum here that just look lovely against that drop of adobe color which is a very tan color and it seems to take on different shades it seems to get a little lighter depending on the light and you can see how the back fence looks now and I apologize but the neighbors are out mowing their lawn now it's a beautiful fall day it warmed up we had a good frost last night but it warmed up after that and it has been sunny and glorious. So this is the lagoon fencing that we have back here. And you can see this fence in order to make it level, definitely had to be higher than the rest of the fence, but they took some of the extra dirt and filled under it, which was really nice of them. And then you can see we have this nice back gate here, which is gonna be so much easier to get open and to be able to use than the other one because I had to fiddle faddle with it all of the time. It was kind of off center and off kilter and so it didn't really latch properly. But this is the lagoon variety of the fence and you can see it has lots of spacing through each of the slats which allows us to continue to see back into that back garden. It does have more of that visual weight like I was talking about earlier but I think it's a really beautiful tie in to the shed and goes really well with uh, the roof in terms of the coloring and the brick. And it kind of makes this have a more of a park-like setting. It feels a little bit more formal than it did before because uh, the chain link fence is gone. I have some things to clean up, um, you know, just things that were kind of leaning against the fence, but yeah, I'm just so pleased with how this came out. You can see the back fence is a little bit closer to things back here. So these are definitely going to have to be rearranged on the other side, the stepping stones. But the garden looks a whole lot different than it did just a couple of days ago because of this fence and I'm really loving it all the more for it. Tell me what you guys think. I'm just thrilled with it. I think it was certainly worth the investment and I feel like it's going to last for many, many years. Very high quality um, in terms of the installation. I definitely recommend the Ranch Life Plastics Group. They were pleasant to work with. Um, 
and here's the other gate that we have with a really nice easy latch here and we'll just back up so you can see what that looks like from here really nice clean lines it really makes the yard feel more like it's ours i don't know if that makes sense but it feels like the edge of the property is more well defined but it also feels kind of open because of those small gaps that let some light in through the fence so i think that's also going to help with some of the shady areas of the garden between the lighter color that may reflect some more light and just letting in that little bit of extra sunlight through the slats in the fence is so pretty Definitely the darker foliage has a very striking contrast to this color. One of the things that I will note is if you take on a project like this, definitely prepare yourself to have some soil compaction issues um, because as uh, folks come out and they work in your garden there will be lots of foot traffic and even if they do such a marvelous job like this group did in avoiding damaging plants and such they will step in your garden beds and each footstep will compress the soil so it will take some time for the garden to recover so here's an example of you know like the grass and that's just normal wear and tear as you have uh, work crews coming through but Hopefully it will all be very minimal. I'll have to push this trellis back up right here. And we'll take a look at what this gate looks like from the other side, because this one is just a single gate, but it is the Haven fence. So it is also very beautiful and it's very quiet and they work so good compared to the other ones that I have. I used to have to kind of, oh, push into them a little bit with my body to get them to work sometimes. And, uh, don't have to do that at all here. So, oops, gotta watch my step here as I back into the little brick bed. But here's how it has turned out. I love how the bird bath is actually pretty well centered on this post right here. Um, that's kind of cool that that turned out like that. I know the neighbors are really enjoying the fence and even talked about potentially painting their fence a similar color just to make it look even nicer from the street. But Overall, I'm really, really happy with this project and how it turned out. It's going to be really fun working around it next year and figuring out, you know, how it works within the garden and how to take different pictures and how the light works with it. Because every time you make a change to the garden with the structure, it definitely makes things just a tiny bit different. Well, thank you so much for joining me on this journey. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did and are getting a lot of satisfaction out of seeing the finished product. Again, Ranch Life Plastics was great to work with, so I highly recommend them. And I'll put their contact information and information about their website in the description below so that if you're interested or live in the area nearby that you want to have some business with them, feel free. Um, this is not sponsored in any way. I paid for my funds, um, but we did do a collaboration in terms of them allowing me to be able to film this to share the journey with you. And uh, I thank them for that. Well, thank you all for joining me again. And I appreciate you each and every time that we get to share time in the garden together. And we'll see you next time. Bye.